probably says a lot about your sexuality. Now, there's only one right answer to this. You'd rather get domed up or fellatioed, if you will. And it says 8% of Americans say they think they could beat a lion in a fist fight. And the reason I wanted to share this <laughs> is because I saw this and I was like, that's me. That's I'm, me. The 8%. I'm the 8%. <laughs> <laughs> but there would have to be menstrual cycle registration and you'd only be able to carry three weeks out of the month. Post that on the internet? I'll post it. Yeah. It's amazing, dude. He's like sitting between two rocks with a creek running under him. Yeah, it's majestic. It is pretty majestic. I uh, you know, I'm an auditor for insurance at the local barbecue and they're like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I make guns, a body armor. I'm an arms dealer. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, I'm an arms <laughs> dealer. I'm a fucking arms dealer. Bro. <laughs> I'm an international <laughs> arms dealer. I'm the merchant of death. Yeah, I'm the <laughs> That it? Are we are we rocking and rolling? We're check, live. Do you hit, hit a mic check. Uh, mic check. Mic check. Mic check. We're live <sighs> from Seattle. Hit a Michael check. Uh, Michael. Michael <sighs> check. Well done. You. It looks like you're. This is better than. So welcome to the two A Procast. I can't believe it's not butter. I can't believe it's not. But I, you know it, what's what's interesting about this episode is we actually filmed a podcast. We did. We had a full podcast almost finished actually, and I looked at Nolan. And I said, you know what, dude, this he wasn't... looked me in my eyes. I did. I looked at him and I said... I love you. I think I said forever. I love you. In fact, you probably... Do you still have the footage? Yes. <laughs> Maybe slide it in there. It's kind of embarrassing for me. I was like, I appreciate everything you do. I'll, I'll, and thank no, no, you no, for you staying late. No, you don't have to say it. I'll just, I'll just like put a little piece in. Dude. And I said, I'm just not feeling it today, man. And I don't, I don't think we're giving our 2 a potato chips everything that, that they, we can possibly that, that give we them. That we could possibly give them. Yeah, I kind of half-assed it. And, and uh, we were... <laughs> we're having a cigar. It's true. In that episode, I was smoking a pipe. And you were smoking a pipe, and I couldn't really talk and smoke a cigar at the same time. So it was it very was distracting. Highly ineffective, and it'll yeah. never happen again. Promise. Um, so you're, you're you're enjoying a glass of whiskey from the two A from the two Alpha whiskey. Tactical Lounge. I see. Yes. For well, those of you that don't know, hold on, hold, a, please hold, stop. <laughs> Collaborate and listen? Yes. Are you back with a brand new invention? Damn straight. Does I something am. grab a hold of you tightly? I mean, you are under the table. Does it flow like a harpoon right daily and nightly? Wait, with both of your hands up here, who's grabbing me under the table right now? That's what I'm talking about. Sister. Um you know you want to know what I realized <clears throat> thanks to the comment section on Did our on our video what he just realized. about the uh, tactical lounge mm -hmm. that we're stupid. And we completely what? missed out on the opportunity to name our fucking yes. gun shop the ATF. The ATF convenience store. I know. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking. So Somebody commented that in, in the comment section, and I was I like, know. wait a second. I didn't name this video the ATF convenience store? I know. Did and you I, change it? No, not yet. Well, change it. I will. God damn. It's still time. It's still time. So, Dude, listen, I could change that probably like next week and it'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. Truth. People will be like, Social. what video is this? <laughs> Click on so, it again. You've been tricked. Um, yeah. The Tactical Lounge that we built, that you participated in building as well, has uh, whiskey from the whiskey bar, which he's sipping on right now. Uh, cigars, all complimentary. Yes. Free whiskey, free yes. cigars. Yes. And of it, course, uh, of, co of course, firearms as well. And we just really wanted to cover every letter inside the ATF. Yeah. And I think we did a really good job doing it. I think we're I don't better think than you... the ATF, to be honest with you, because we won't kill your dog. That's true. That's true. Yeah. We actually give you alcohol, tobacco, and firearms instead of take them away. That's right. So it's the opposite of ATF. So we should call it the anti-ATF convenience store. It doesn't have the same ring to it. Um, I believe that's just called being a heterosexual male. Anyways, moving on. Yeah, <laughs> right. Or an American. Or an American. Goddamn American. I believe that's doing the same thing. Um, yeah, so it was a pretty exciting week. It was a pretty exciting week. It's I'm been sorry, exciting. We, it's been an exciting month. It's sorry been an exciting year. We're talking yeah. shot show, the shot of shows. Um, and then doing this to a pro course, which by the way, if you want to learn how to start a business in the second amendment community, click the link down below and sign up because I have made the executive decision. Do it. Dude, fucking next. I think I'm just going to open her up next week. I'm thinking like next Friday or Saturday. That's on you. So dog. if you guys are listening to this. On Saturday, which you will be, um, which is the day after today. If you're listening to this today, <laughs> today. Then, what is today? 
on Saturday. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to launch a, kind of a little soft launch on that course at a deep, deep balls deep discount um, on on next. I, I know I am, but I'm really gonna get everything to to try to get going by next Friday. And if not, then I lied and I'll do it the Friday after that, but no later than the Friday after that. And then if he didn't do it the Friday after that, he <laughs> lied and it'll be the Friday after that. I swear it's happening. Though. I swear for realsies. Here's the caveat, though. You guys are going to get in there and There's be no like, dude, why, why, why is this only, you know, five different sections and, you know, maybe, you know, 40 different videos. There should be much more to the course. You're right. You're fucking right. There should be more to the course, but we're going to build it together because we're going to be in there. All the tactical employees are going to be in there kind of like helping out Let's with any questions. Labor. That's like, not, it's not okay anymore. Yeah, no, I do. They're still paid. They're still on the payroll. They're just oh. going to be in there. I, I already talked to Joe about it today. I was like, Hey, if somebody needs to know how to make holsters, then you're going to get in there and you're going to help them. Oh. And he was like, yeah, sounds good, man. Oh so, no, no, yeah. no. I was talking about, cause you were like, we'll build it together. I'm like, that's, that's free labor. Oh, <laughs> that is what you're talking about. Yeah. You're talking, talking about, about for the that. students. That was a joke, guys. Yeah, but then I'll be able to realize like what questions you actually have. Yeah. Because maybe I just went through and uh, filmed 40 videos on how to start a business. And they're like, yeah, I already knew that. Like, what else you got? Right. Fair. I don't know. So we'll, we'll never know. It's a pretty cool fucking experience, though. What's fucking cool about being in today's day and age is the fact that you guys can literally start a fucking business on e-commerce on a website and make a ton of money doing it. For with like little to no effort. And here's why I'm saying this is because we spent the last year building this gun shop out. I mean, in some capacity or another, like whether it was like maybe it was just a month doing like all the framing and the sheetrock or, you know, some of the demo or the flooring. And and then we spent the last month sleepless nights all day, every day, really putting everything together. All this work went into this one shop, okay? And I promise I'm getting somewhere with this point. All this work went into this gut one shop. And we had a day last week where we did like um, $300 in sales. And I was up late, late at night working and our sales reset on the website. So think about this, Tacticon website, our sales reset. So if I went to run a report at 12.02, it would often say, you know, just a few bucks. But I literally logged in at 12.02 Tacticon had done in two minutes. The website had three times the sales than the entire gun store did all day. So I had an entire day of sales that took a third. The reason why I bring that up is because it is the power. It's just the power of e-commerce. It's the power of digital marketing yeah. because you get guys all over the United States buying from you and you can keep a gun shop open all day and still not sell anything or sell very little. Now we've had some other pretty good gay days, gays. Uh, we've had some pretty good gays in the Freudian shop. Is that a slip? <laughs> yeah. Just, just thinking about sucking that D all day. Um, <laughs> we've had some pretty good days, but that's the bad ones. You know, it's the ups and the downs and the same will come with any business, even digitally, but damn, there's so much more leverage in it. But I mean, I mean, the cool part about uh, the digital frontier, the digital marketplace um, is if you will. Yeah. Once you set it up, it doesn't require a whole lot of upkeep. No, you don't it, have to pay somebody to sit there and watch your shop. So nobody steals. Yep. Um, and, the, and it's open 24 seven. Yes, it is up in 24. It's the coolest thing because the other thing is it's almost like it's the fucking future. It's the future. It's the future. So it took me for, for the two alpha shop. It took me, uh, it took us like a year to completely build everything out and get everything dialed in. And it took me three hours to build the entire website. Yeah. That is the, that is the power of digital. <laughs> and I, if, if I would have spent another three hours just adding product to it, then I could have literally just closed the shop and probably made more money. Which online. So. Speaking of the two <laughs> a pro course dot com. or dot com dot com that should be up and running soon. Right? So the marketplace uh, the two way pro marketplace is like the Amazon for guns. And you know, yes. I like to say, as I like to, as I like to say, and some of us that, you know, follow say fuck Amazon. And what we tried to do was literally, um, create a marketplace that rivaled it as you guys know. And we did, and it's fucking amazing. And you can go on as a seller and sell the stuff that you make and manufacture within the firearm community. And you don't have to compete with Amazon because they're communists and they don't allow your shit on their platform. Anyway, two way pro.com done. We're, we can ex start, start accepting payments, I believe, on, on Monday or Tuesday. Monday or so, Tuesday. Ooh, if that's you get, exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, so what is that, the 10? Because the banks were having some serious 11th. issues, not only about it having guns and gun stuff, but it also about the fact that it was a marketplace. They didn't like that. They were, so like, so around, they were like, so anybody can sell 
anything to anybody else? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, Ugh. I was like, it's called a free market. Like, come on, come on. Give me the, yeah, we give me exist the, give me the in payment. a free market. Yeah. yeah we, we exist in a free market. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me give, yeah. give breeze. Give breeze. So that should be live like the 13th. <laughs> yeah. So just don't, about. don't go going on there this weekend. Cause what happened is we talked about this before and people went on there and bought stuff and then we have to manually call them and like take payment. So listen right now, <laughs> it is not open unless you are listening past the 13th and then it still might not be open <laughs> and you need to double check with current Look, if things. you go in and put in your credit card and then that credit card hit your account i will take your credit card information then, uh, then, and i will okay. send it to a nigerian prince <laughs> nigerian prince i like it anyway so thank you for listening through all that um jibber jabber jibber jabber jibber jabber we do actually have a show today no, we don't. Uh, dude. Shut up. Dude, fucking, it's probably going to be absolute garbage, like most of them are. But I am absolutely. Fortunately garbage. for us, there's only like four or five thousand people that actually tune into this. But they are the best four, four to five thousand people that we can possibly you. imagine because you guys get in there and falls deep in the comments and let us know how you really feel, which is typically, um, I don't know. I don't even know like, how I was going to finish that since. Anyways, emotional. I'll continue it on. Yeah, just this... they continue the debauchery down in the comments is really what goes down, and we read all of them. Yeah, I'm down there just. Completely Plowing bottle out. of Jergens, fucking going for it, dude. You know, so watching it. You said this just a moment ago, Momentary. and I completely agree with you, dude. This year has been crazy to me. What you said when you brought up Shot Show, mm -hmm. I was like, oh wow, yeah, that was that, that was that happened this year. I feel like it's already like November. I feel uh, like I've yeah. existed an entire year already. <laughs> I know, I do. It really does. It feels like a really, really long. It's just crazy. Is that yeah. good or is that bad? I don't know. Is there a way to decipher? There's a so there's an explanation for as you get older, time goes faster. Right. Have we talked about this? I believe so. I believe I've touched. Should we on recap? It. I'll recap for it's, viewers who who may have missed an episode. Yeah, for who might have missed like three hours into the episode that I probably talked about it, which in. would probably be me. Exactly. So there's this. I I saw this really interesting thing about mm. time relativity, about when you're a child and everything moves so slow. And then as we get older, because we always say, God, like the day just flew by. Why does time keep going faster and faster? Is because time is relative to the time you've experienced. Right. Right? Yeah. So if you're 10 years old, you only know 10 years of time. And of course, time is going to go by slow because you only have 10 years to reference. But you multiply that by four times sped up four times faster as somebody my age, which is 40 years old, because even though I act like I'm 20, time still moves faster because right, I'm giving myself some credit. 13, 14. I was about to say, well, we need to tone that <laughs> back yeah. a little bit there, Buckaroo. But um, yeah, time actually if you think about it, my time reference goes over 40 years. And so naturally a day is going to go by faster for me than it does for a 10 year old because a 10 year old has, has, has had less days than I have had. Oh, I it's thought you were going to say it's because of the amphetamines, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the fact that I do meth every once in a while, <laughs> so, doesn't you know, help, just you know? really cranks the day. <laughs> it really just turns it up. No, so. that is, that is an interesting, that is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, just a little something to chew on. Maybe it's know? just because we're having so much fun. That could be it too. You ever think about that? Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. So for all of those of you that, dude, I'm telling you right now, this business is fucking cool. It's a good. Best a, job I ever had. It is. Dude, yeah. it's the best job I ever had. It's a good business to be in, man. It's the the people inside of it are amazing. The people you get to meet and work with. And just the fact that like when everybody else is telling people that, uh, you know, I'm an auditor for insurance at the local barbecue. And they're like, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I make guns and body armor. I'm an arms like, dealer. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm an arms dealer. <laughs> I'm, a fucking arms dealer bro. <laughs> I'm an international <laughs> arms dealer. I'm the merchant of death. <laughs> so, no, it's it's a good, you know, it's just a good conversation piece to it be is. able to have. And uh, it's it just does fucking not rad. Work. It does not work in L.A., though. I'll tell you that much. It is not a good conversation piece in Los Angeles. It depends on where you live. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. It really depends if, on where you live. If you're down in yeah. the OC, probably a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. Which are my favorite conversations to have are the most awkward ones when I know so that I'm great. talking to another human being that's just like, I don't like this and I don't like where it's headed and I don't like what you do and what you stand for. It just makes me, it, it just, it, it fuels the flame, man. It pours gas on my fire. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. I know. Well, I that's know. because I know it's, that you I like just to like, find people's buttons and really oh, twist I it. I fucking love it, dude. But I like to do it respectfully, like not like a douchebag. Because respectfully, in the end, respectfully. No, no, really, no. It's, it's seriously respectful because here, here's the honest to God truth, man. If we're talking to people who don't like the Second Amendment and we are only the only face because maybe they live in their own little bubble, which most people do. We live in our little bubble of echo chamber, kind of self-fulfilling prophecies. I would Not argue. all of us kind of branch out and have like liberal friends or people that don't like gun friends. We typically, 
roll with people who think like and associate with the same belief systems that we do. So I think, when you get out, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say, I, I, agree, I agree with that point. I think, I think it's starting to become a little bit more than a 50-50, which is part of the problems we're seeing today. Yeah. It's a little bit more of a 60, 40, 70, 30 kind of thing of people living in those echo chambers. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of it. And people associate themselves with people who are just going to reinforce the same beliefs that they already have. And this is why it's important for us to understand, and, I, and I'm talking to everybody, including myself, that when we get into these conversations with somebody who doesn't like the Second Amendment and who believes that we should have an obscene amount of gun control, I think it is our responsibility to be a good representation of it. And that is why, I'm not going to lie to you, man, like I've been seriously con like reconsidering kind of the path that we were on. I still want to be spicy on our social media. I don't want to tone down the rhetoric. I love the way that we play. But there are certain things that I was thinking about like, you know, maybe doing that video like we did on LGBTQ plus, like, right, the mm -hmm. liberal gun and ballistic training qualifications yes. <laughs> plus much more. I, I started to think about it. I'm like, maybe that should not be a thing anymore. Maybe we should, maybe I should stop doing shit like that because all, it, it definitely doesn't galvanize the two parties. If anything, it just, it separates them. And not to be a bitch about everything. It's not, I'm not doing it because, you know, YouTube told me to or like somebody else said, hey, In maybe fact, you shouldn't do it. most of those videos are monetized, which is hilarious. Which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're talking about creating a community. Right. Now, when somebody from that side of the aisle, if you will, like somebody that you're talking to doesn't really necessarily agree with your beliefs, and you may be the only Second Amendment proponent that they encounter out in the wild for a while because they're surrounding themselves with people who believe like them. So you may be the only representation they have. And if we act like fucking idiots and or we assholes, talk like, yeah. at, you know, and we talk down to people and we start shouting at them and shoving our opinions down their throats instead of truly trying to see where they're coming from, it could be the only representation that they have of the Second Amendment. That's true. And then if they don't like you, they're like, well, I don't want to affiliate with those guys because right. those guys probably all act like that. I think it's important to at least consider that when we're, you know, in the midst of attempting to, uh, you know, swing somebody over to the other side. No, it's very will. true. And so, I, th yeah. I think Joe um, from Despop said it really, really well in our, I was, uh, when I was editing the podcast that we did with him, he said it really, really well, which was, <clears throat> if you hate me, but you're into guns, mm -hmm. that's great. My job's already done. Like, because you you're into yeah. guns. Like, his whole thing is bringing more people into the Second Amendment. That's a good and point. It's, you know, it's, it's, that, <clears throat> it's that really good, good point of, like, the more people we bring into this, the more people that we can suede, I don't, I don't even like to say suede their opinion, but, like, to, to show that your protection's on you. Yeah. And well, it's to see the truth, right? Right, yeah. It's just, it's to just see like, the truth. hey. That's it. We're, we're here to protect ourselves yeah. and each other. Right. And an armed society is better than a disarmed society. How true that is today. Because what I was, I was really thinking long and hard about, we talk a lot about what's happening in our country. We talk a lot about like what the politicians are doing and all this nonsense that's happening. But what can we like do about it fundamentally? Right. If we are not the ones electing politicians, I don't know if anybody realizes that. But we are not the ones putting those people in front of us even to vote. Sure, you vote. Even in a perfect world, if every vote counted, these most of these guys, they're bought for, paid for, put in by other entities. They are funded by companies. They are funded by businesses, people with agendas, funded probably by other countries to an extent. And if that's what's happening, then how does our vote even count? So now what do we do? do we, how do we fix that? How does the average guy in his home, who has no ability to influence or affect politics under the, other than a single vote, actually make a difference. And I think the way we do that is by arming and protecting and training ourselves to defend ourselves when the day inevitably comes that a tyrannical government will rear its ugly head and do the shit that they've always done in the past historically. When they stop boiling the frog and they actually make a move? Yeah. Yeah. It's only, yeah. It's only a matter of time. And it I is hate, a matter of time. I hate to sound... Cause like, no, as, I, was, I'm, I, I hated to sound like that too. Yeah. I know where you're going with that, but it's, it's the reality that we live in. Our kids, our children are not safe from a full generation of the life that we were able to enjoy. Right. No, they're I not. firmly believe that. No. And even I, like myself on the last kind of last edge of what you got to experience as a kid, you know? Yeah. Like 
the next generation they're they're living through some rough times right now dude yeah like between yeah rising prices of everything taxes house costs dude, rent costs can't buy a fucking home dude like you, no yeah well i just had this conversation with my mom the other day actually i spent um thirty six thousand dollars this year on rent for one year lease 36 grand and i was talking to my Jesus, mom dude yeah I don't was, mind what how big is your house uh i need to look up the square footage I mean, is the three bedroom like a couple thousand square feet, probably? It's, but or? it's on it's a two story. Okay. And it's sixteen, seventeen hundred square feet. Okay. All so, right. But it's like it's like the master bedroom is it's smaller. It's about smaller than this room. Okay. Um Yeah, it's so an older home. Yeah. And what's crazy is like in, in two thousand thirteen when I when I was <clears throat> when I purchased my first home, it was a twenty three hundred square foot home. I got it for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It was what was your mortgage? It was brand new. It was nineteen hundred a month. Yeah, it was brand new. It had solar. You know what I mean? It like that's what life was like ten years ago. Right, just ten years ago. It is insane what's happened now. And the more we price the next generation out of being able to succeed, and we keep filling their fucking heads with shit that the people from generations before us were able to enjoy like, well, just go out and buy property. You see the shit all the time on social media. Just go out and buy some property. Just go out and own a home. Just go out and get some rental properties and make some. Stop being so lazy. Stop being so lazy. Stop being so lazy. How much do we fucking hear that? But this is coming from a generation, including my own, who's been able to enjoy all the benefits of just going to college, working hard, and then being able to make a decent salary. Right. In fact, I probably can argue that I didn't get the opportunity to even enjoy that because right, you know what year I graduated college? 2011, which was the middle of a fucking recession. Right. And I got a job making $17 an hour, which is a dollar above minimum wage now in California, right? That and was a hot pay back then, dude. And it, well, no, this... It could have been, a, I'm sure it was a hot pay, but my, the guy that hired me at this company, it was a, it was a surety company and the guy that hired me, he would boast about how great it was to be an employer during that time because he could hire college graduates, people with even, even outside of college graduates, people with high degrees of skill because we were in a recession. He was like, I can get people, I can get the greatest human resources for very little amount of money because of the economy we're in. And I mean, he oh, would what te shit. tell us that in meetings. And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm right here. Well, maybe, you know I, what I, mean? maybe I think it's a hot salary because when I, I thinking back to 2011, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what, 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 what you might've been making. What else, what was, how old would I be then? What was your... What was your first job? Like, How old were you? Yeah, twelve years I'd ago. Be like okay, 17. there you go. Or twelve years ago, I'd be fifteen. So yeah, I was making. That was thirteen years ago. I can't math. Was, I was making like nine bucks an hour. Working, okay, working at the deli at right. Holiday Market. There dude. it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like to me, seventeen dollars an hour is like no. Our way. and our minimum hire here. I mean, hire a guy to push a broom at Tacticon is eighteen an hour. Like that's zero skill, zero experience. Just need a guy to. Push I'm thinking a about going back to it, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> which means I'm hiring guys at a dollar more than I got paid even a decade ago, and it, it's just insane where these things go. And then you look at the prices of everything, and how can you afford to do fucking anything when an entire day's work goes into filling up your car? Dude, so yeah, my Honda took yeah. seventy bucks to fill up the other day. Look, I was able to actually afford shit, and. Uh, when I was like a teenager working my first job, what was, what was your first job? My first, my, I mean, technically teaching karate was my first job, but like, that's a pretty cool but, fucking first job. Yeah. It was pretty sick. Yeah. Do you uh, remember what you're making? I made a hundred dollars a week. How much were you working? Like what were you five, trying? six days a week, but, Oh yeah. Okay. But like I was, how old were you? I was 14. Were you allowed to? Be employed. No. <laughs> yeah. no, it was completely under the table. Oh, got it. Got it, it was super sick. Child labor. Um, yeah, but yeah. I also it was a work trade. So to be fair, I started getting lessons for free. Oh, got I it. I no longer had to pay. Yeah, yeah. It was like you work here, right? Uh, but because you're teaching two classes compared to taking one, yeah. like well, I'll, I'll toss you. Your job was way fucking cooler than I. My first job was Jack in the Box. Well, I mean, my second job, second, when I was like, because I looked at my instructor and I was like, hey, I want to get some re real world right. job experience. I want to try out an actual job. He's like, okay. It was holiday market working at the deli. Nice. So yeah, I got it. Same, got it. same. Yeah. 
I upgraded to, uh, I got a promotion, uh, I think like a, a 20 cent an hour. So I started at Jack in the Mox making $5 and 25 cents an hour. I believe that was the minimum wage back in 19, 72, $5 I, I know, and 20 cents forget, an hour. That must've been like in 2000 or 1998. I think that's or still 1990, the minimum wage in Tennessee. 1999. <laughs> yeah. It was like five, it was five twenty five an hour. Sick. And then I got a bump to 550 going over to McDonald's across the freeway and doing a little bit of that. And then I didn't, didn't really make it too, too long over at the, at the Mickey D's. I think I, 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 some dude smoked me out before my shift and I got super fucking high and super paranoid. And, uh, I, they found me by the dumpsters, pale white, just like waiting. (laughs) What? Just like the movie is that, Waiting. Yeah, but I've seen that movie a thousand times. Wait. Do, the kids? Well, I mean, they weren't oh. paranoid, but they got oh. high as fuck all yeah, the time. Just guessing, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh. yeah, I've never never done well with marijuana. Um, but uh, we, uh, yeah, the, you know, then it was like fucking big O tires and, you know what I mean? It was just a ton of these jobs, but making almost nothing, but still remembering being able to afford like split rent and like I right. was able to do things even making that little amount of money. You know what's fucking hilarious is hmm. I watched, um, this is to get into another conversation. I promise we'll weave the Second Amendment back in here pretty soon because it goes along with this movie. I watched, my wife put on, she found like movies from the 90s Sick. on Netflix. Great time. Last night. And so we watched Fear with Mark Wahlberg and Reese Witherspoon. Have you have you seen that movie? Such a good movie, dude. dude. <laughs> I haven't seen it in so long. <laughs> I haven't so seen it good. either in so long. This movie is, if you guys haven't 90s seen, if you guys haven't Marky seen Mark, bro. the 90s Marky Mark, dude. If you guys haven't seen the movie Fear with Mark Wahlberg, it's on Netflix right now and you got to go check it out because... I want you guys to notice something in this movie. Well, first, let's go back to the payment. Like, there were two girls that walked up to... Two girls and a guy walk up to a counter inside this, like, I don't know, deli or something that they were at. And they ordered, like, sandwiches. And this girl got a slice of cake and then a couple of drinks. And I think the total was, like, $8.61. And this was back in, like, the 90s. Before property prices have gone... Jesus Christ. I couldn't... But, like, they ordered it. And it was just funny because it was kind of a little time capsule of what something would have cost back then. Um, But... Going into the Second Amendment, it was interesting because I'm watching this movie, and here we've got Marky Mark and uh, his like crew of dudes that are not the Funky Bunch. These are actually actors in the movie, <laughs> but these these guys are attempting to break in uh, to Reese Witherspoon's house. First, I'm going to say a couple of things. That fucking dad looked at. I don't know if you like just watch the movie and watch it. The watch the way, and I can't believe the editors didn't catch this. Just watch the way he looks at his daughter. Like all the time, it's the creepiest shit. I thought he was the bad guy the entire fucking movie. Well, that's that's like and I'll well let's, he, it was, let's go go full and circle he'd here. He'd park and back like to Marky Mark. She'd dude. get out of the car and he'd kiss her on the lips, and I'm like, are we? Is this was this acceptable in the '90s? And it's not acceptable now because she's same thing happened in the the Transformers film okay. that Marky Mark was in uh, recently. Mm-hmm. Well, not recently, probably a couple years ago. All right, but you've got. Mark Wahlberg, who's like 40-something. Okay. And then you have, who's supposed to be his daughter, just this smoke show. And she's off, like, and that's, she does not look like she is 19, maybe. Right, She right. looks like she's 25 and gorgeous. Are you talking about, what's her name? I don't know. What's that? Is it the main girl in Transformers? No, that it's everybody's, not Megan Fox. Oh, Megan no, Fox. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, no. go ahead. But it's like, you look at this girl, and it's like, that's not a girl. That's a woman. Mm. And so, like, there was, like, this weird, awkward, like, kind of sexual tension between the two of them. Because, <laughs> yeah, of course, the Michael tell. Bay film, he's like, you need to be tan, <laughs> belly showing, and Daisy Dukes. <laughs> <laughs> what man isn't going to be looking? What else would, would right. you anyway, need? Anyway, sorry. Continue. No, it's all good. But so throughout this entire movie, to, to get back to the real premise, you got, you got Mark and these dudes trying Mark. to break into this dude's house. And this entire time, like, he's got his house locked down like Fort Knox. Like, you can't break the windows. You supposedly can't open the doors. He's got this big security system in it. These guys are finding ways into their house. And I'm watching this the entire time. And my wife's like, God, I can't believe that this is happening. I can't be like, well, not I can't believe this happened. But, like, she's like, what would you do in a situation like that, right? She's like, what would you do if these guys were breaking into our house? And I'm like, 
I would fucking shoot them. Yeah. So you get this entire event that lasts like 45 minutes of like six dudes attempting to break through this house at any given time if this dude just had a gun. You just smoke them all and the movie would be over. And I get it wouldn't make for a very good movie. Right. But but even on that, let's talk about that. <clears throat> he wouldn't even have to smoke them all. Yeah. If you think about it realistically, <laughs> right? Obviously. Never mind. I'm not going to say that. What? Anyways. What? No, I'm not saying. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah. Realistically, if six dudes were trying to break into your house. Yeah. Do not do this. This is not advice. <laughs> But realistically, you could just let a round off into the ceiling. Right. And those dudes are no longer going to be in house. they would know you had a gun. Yeah. 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 You don't even have to shoot it towards them. And let's talk about it. I just don't a, think you would have to, but. Yeah. Well, what's, what's interesting is they, they tried multiple ways to get in this home. They tried multiple ways to attack them, and they couldn't do it. And then the security guard from up the hill at the gate finally came down to the house and right. then pulled out some guns and tried to stop them. Right. And then one of the guys pulls out a gun. I don't get it. No. He, yeah, and then one of the guys pulls out again. She's the security, and I'm like, "Come on, this this whole thing is uh, preposterous." Preposterous. <laughs> I just like, where's the editing behind this? Where's exactly. the guy that was like, you know what? The audience might think that this doesn't really. Makes anyway, sense. it was the well, 90s, not, dude. It doesn't need to not, make sense. Not to there mention face off okay? the entire time. So Mark Wahlberg, they found him in like he was in a bar in the movie. Right. He's old enough to drink multiple times at a bar drinking beer. So the guy's clearly 21 years old. Reese Witherspoon in this movie is 16 years old, and he brings she brings Mark over to the house to meet his parents. And at no point in time, like. You know, they actually liked him at first, and he was nice at first, and they were getting along, and they were like, cool, good find on the boyfriend, everything's great. At no time were they like, hey, why is my 16-year-old daughter getting plowed by a 21-year-old man? You want to know something crazy? That is straight up, that is pedophilia. So yeah. this whole movie is just a movie about pedophilia. You want to know what's fucking crazy? Is that in the United States, there are still a bunch of fucking states where 16 is the legal age of consent. Get the fuck out of here. Dead fucking serious. Man. Yeah. Next time you think America's past <clears throat> it and the rest of the world's fucking weird, you're wrong. Jesus Christ, where does it end, dude? Uh, At 18, hopefully. With a bullet? Yeah. Pff, dude, you can't with be... a fucking wood chipper? You can't be 25 years old with a 16 year I mean, yeah. I don't know. Like, apparently you can. I didn't yeah. realize that was a thing. But... No. Yeah. Anyway, that was my experience with the movie Fear. It's always that a good scary. trip down memory lane. It's Going good. Watching you know, some 90s and just watching movies. how... Yeah. Like different the world. All was. the gun, all that would have taken was a gun just to end the entire premise of the entire movie. Yeah. There's a very Game few over. subset of people that when they hear bullets, they walk towards them. And most of those people are in JSOC. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. It's a good call. Yeah. A great oldie. Yeah. It's a good <laughs> it's a great oldie right there. Uh so what's on the uh what's on the menu today? Favorite nineties well, movie real quick. Like what do we oh. got? I'll probably accidentally pull in. Yeah, I know. That's probably what I'm gonna, about to do, too, because I'm not sure if the movie that I'm thinking of is, in fact, 80s or 90s, but I'll start. Okay. And it's going to piss you off because it's probably yours, too. Yeah. Bloodsport, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Fucker. Blood Is Bloodsport one of your faves? Yeah, that's dude. Top three or just number one? Uh, definitely top three. I think it... It might be number one, though, I'd have dude. to go over, like, a, a, a queue of movies. So... I know. I would need to... Get my Rolodex going. Let's get the cats out in the audience. If you guys, what is your favorite nineties movie? Nineties movie down below comments because I'm I'm going through this Rolodex of ninety movies right now that I'm about to go watch when I find the time somewhere, but I can't wait to see the ones that I've forgotten about. So put them down in the comments, especially you old fucks like me and Kumate, Kumate, Kumate. Yeah, dude, this is the greatest movie so ever. So good, dude. Yeah, it's so that, that shin, guy's a real guy. That shin you know kick that, right? like traumatized me. Oh, the 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 leg snap in half mm -hmm. when he was all crack and broke the dude's leg in it. Yeah, and, yeah. or was it the arm? Was it the leg? It's been so long since I watched. It. I think it was the leg all where I know he went crack. Is the drop to splits? Mm. Fucking yeah. Mm. So good. Money, Jean Claude, so crushing it. <sighs> If you guys haven't seen the latest commercial with, uh, or maybe it's an old commercial, but it's a Volvo. The Volvo commercial, commercial with him yeah. doing the splits, splits between, between the truck. Was that real? Dude, there's no way. There's no way. There's, there's no, no way. way. There's no way. In your personal split taking experience. Because uh, you can do the splits. You I can, can do, do the, the splits. Full, yeah. yeah um, Post it up. You got the photo? 
<sighs> Will you post that on the internet? I'll post it. Yeah. It's amazing, dude. He's like sitting between two rocks with a creek running under him. Yeah, it's majestic. It is pretty majestic. I, it's very Jean-Claude the, Van Damme. Okay, so <laughs> I feel like I need to save myself here. The only reason I took that is because one of my best friends, I I didn't really do the splits a whole lot, mm-hmm. right? Like I could do them for a long time because martial arts. Right. You just get flexible. Get flexy, boys. Uh, but then my best friend found out that I could do it. Yeah. Because I never really shared that shit. Yeah. And he was like, you it can wasn't do the, the most like masculine thing, especially back then, to be like, right. I could do the splits like right. a cheerleader. Right. Got it. You only whipped that out in front of the cheerleaders. Of course. Yeah. You don't show your friends. You no. show the cheerleaders. <laughs> exactly. It works, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. And he was like, dude, that's the coolest fucking thing because the Jean Claude Van Damme oh, yeah. fucking came out. Right. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's cool. Yeah. He's like, fucking do it here, do it here, do it there. He's and so I was always up. egged on by my buddy. Got it. Yeah. I was Got never it. doing it for myself. Yeah, it is, it is majestic. It's a good word to uh, describe it. Uh, so, yeah. all right. Where I would like to go, because I feel like this was a good segue of the 2A. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about finances. We were talking about the 90s, which has nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. But finances in the Second <laughs> Amendment. <laughs> You're just talking to talk? Yeah, sometimes. Nice. Okay. <laughs> That's how I get through my day. Um, we, we brought this up earlier, and by earlier I mean the podcast that we filmed that is not making it to light. Mm-hmm. Um, Grand Thumb's PSA video. Right. He did a video on a $400 PSA. How long, how good is it? Is it just as good? Which I'm pissed off because he got to it before I did. Yeah, uh, I know. That sucks. But he did I a know. good job because he's got good ammo sponsors and he's got the ammunition and he's got the full auto lower receivers. So he did it justice. He did really good with it. Yeah. We're seeing a paradigm shift and I'm so happy about it. I'm so happy about it. Yep. I went through the comments and I just took a screenshot of one spot in here. And I want to read some of these comments. Okay. Because it's fucking fantastic. Oh, it's a good thing. It's a good All thing. Right, good. Yeah. Who knew? Good comments right. out of the internet. Something we've been saying for quite some time. Yep. Uh, most people don't need a $3,000 rifle. Most people need a $400 rifle with $2,600 worth of ammunition. <laughs> 3000 worth of ammo through a $400 upper. Hard to argue the value there. Grand thumb. Oh, no, that's not, not it. Uh, a $10,000 Gucci gun is far worse than a $500 gun and $5,000 of ammunition and four hundred, forty five hundred dollars worth of training. Yep. Yep. And so that's all the same stuff th- that we've this. been talking about for years and Running's, years and years. Yep. Running so much suppressed in auto without proper maintenance, clean and lube is way beyond what ninety nine percent of shooters are ever going to put an AR through. Yep. As a certified armor, I am impressed, and I've been and been using PSA parts in good, affordable builds for years. Yep. So that's it's crazy. just. I'm happy to kind of see this fucking shift because probably the past two, three years, we entered this zone of like, oh, it's not Daniel Defense. Oh, it's not Knights. Yeah. Oh, it's not, you know, LWRC, maybe. I don't know. HK, whatever. Yeah. That it's not good enough for me, dude. Right. You didn't spend $4,000 on your rifle. It's not good enough for me. And now, now I'm not talking too much poo on this because don't get me wrong, like a Radian is pretty expensive or a Knight Knights is pretty expensive. I've never yeah. fucked around with a Knights, so I can't speak to it too much. Well, Luca, Lucas has them. I don't care. Body Boy has them, that's, so they've got to be good. That's hey, fair <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> Did I fuck your whole train of thought up with that? Woo! Yeah, we anyway, forgot about him for a few weeks. I so. know. Oh. I'd rather forget about him for the rest of time, but that would be great. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. It's okay, but. I've, I've, I've messed around with a full Radiant build before mm-hmm. and it's, it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it is quality. It's built fucking tough, yeah. but also to that effect, you know, what is the 99% going to need? Right. Right. Yeah. You just get such less, it's like incremental value at some point. There's that point of diminishing returns where every dollar that you put in, you're not getting a dollar back out of mm-hmm. it. And it's like that with, and it's really like that with almost anything that you buy, right? Yeah. That that incremental value. It's just, it's like buying a, now I'm going to probably piss some people off with this and gladly, I will gladly do so. But, and I'm not even a Corvette fanboy, but it's like getting a Corvette versus getting 
like a Ferrari. It's like you could spend, I don't know what they are now, like 80, 90 grand, 100 grand, or you could go spend $350,000, $400,000 on a Ferrari. Are you, you're, you're kind of getting that incremental value on performance. Right. At, at some point in time. Right. Because if you went and took a Corvette and then dumped $300,000 into it, that thing's going to run, you know, fucking six minute quarters. Now I'm talking out <laughs> my ass because I don't know the engine specs, but I, yeah. you're getting a V8 here. You're getting a V8 there. <clears throat> yeah, depending on what Ferrari you for, get. For, sure, for the yeah. most, right. Depending on what Ferrari. Yeah. Most of them are V10s And of course, or like a status symbol, obviously, there's like the branding behind it and all that. But, um, and nowhere, in no way, shape, and, or, or form is, you know, comparing cars, <clears throat> is comparing cars to, to guns a thing because one is necessary and one is kind of not. Yeah, we all kind of need a car, but. It's not our constitutional right to own one. I would say it's less necessary. I would say it's less necessary as well. Firearm. Yeah. Absolutely. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because you have legs, you can travel. True. Right. But if you don't have a firearm, you can't protect yourself. Correct. So. And self-protection is like pretty much the key to survival. Right. Right. So just like with expensive cars or with expensive anything, the 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 amount of value that you get is is fairly incremental. You know what I mean? Right. As as opposed to the dollars that you're actually feeding into that thing. And so, you know, because of that, I think all those comments are incredibly, there's a lot of wisdom that are, that's coming out of that. A lot of, there's a paradigm shift that's going on right now. I can already see it happening. Um, I think that, uh, you know, and I'm really, really happy to see, and it was, it was PSA that did it. I mean, you got to give full credit to those guys oh, yeah. for actually being the ones that do it. We didn't have a big enough, we've been doing it for a long time. We didn't do it. We didn't make the paradigm shift. I, I feel like we've added uh, some value into that paradigm shift but i think the one that actually did it the turnkey for that shift was psa because they already had this platform this big brand people knew about it and they, they they're getting these yeah. out into the right influencers they're able to um they're able to leverage a I lot just, of these audiences because all, of it and all, yeah it most gun companies weren't willing to do what they did which was establish a brand and a reputation that people could trust and then not jack their prices way up because right. of it Right. All I hope is that we were at least one of the, I know we were a voice behind it, but yep. I hope that we were at least one of the predominant voices behind the paradigm. We shift. were most certainly a pillar under the foundation of it. And, we still, so. and we still are, yeah. but um, yeah, it is. Sometimes it just takes a bigger voice on the stage to actually start making those They're shifts. fucking grande. Yeah, they are. Morning. They are. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those dudes are almost, I think they said they almost hit a billion dollars in revenue. Something crazy. That is insane. And I that's good because that. we want the market share to come in and dominate and show all the other fire manufacturers, if you don't get your shit together, right. we are going to crush you and eventually buy you. Right. So, and then we'll lower all your prices <laughs> and then we'll have- Get wrecked. Yeah. Thousand dollar radiance. Right. So- yes <laughs> <laughs> saber what up uh, yeah exactly exactly so. um so let's hit this this is a comment from um this is a question rather from from the comments on the discord d asked directly to us nice <clears throat> when it comes to women carrying oh. If you don't know what the Discord is and you're listening right now, get in there because it's a wild, it. it's a treat. There's a there's a ton of cool people in there. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, dude, one you of guys them, are fantastic. Autism Flynn flew out flew out from Florida for the opening. Beautiful. These bastard. dudes are. A lot of the dudes that were in the area came out and like everybody in there is incredibly fucking cool. If you guys want a community, seriously, and I'm looking at you we're right in the YouTube. A community. There is a there is a community inside of this Two A Pro Discord, and the link will be in the description. It's completely free to join, and it is amazing these dudes are just awesome every single fucking one of them dude they're like i love them to yeah. death liam came out and like helped build us the shop too he was like he just hit me up and just stayed until we got out of there at like god knows what fucking time of night 10 o 11 12 o'clock yeah. at night Savage. and just helped us you're such build a beautiful it man Didn't ask for anything fucking love you just let me help you put this together and um these are the type of people that you see in this discord group these are the the, the people we've got um what are they called on the left side channels yeah uh, I'm <laughs> my old ass. Uh, the, there's channels in there. The for pound like, sign. And the pound. I know. I call it a pound sign. I know. Uh, I called you the, out. The Alaska. My <laughs> the, the Alaska. Uh, that we have like Alaska and Alabama. All the states all are the in states. there, so you can link up with guys that are around you and actually like get to know them and go shooting with them. If you don't have a ton of people that you can go out and train with, so dude, it's fucking cool, man. Just like yeah. get in there and check it out. If you don't like it, leave, dude. I mean, yeah. Whatever. A lot know, of. But, you know, there's, I've seen, I don't want to say a lot, but I've seen a fair amount of 
pseudo influencers maybe, but people in the space say that there is no gun community. And I would beg to fucking differ. I beg to differ. There's a couple thousand of them in the discord right yeah. now. And they're and fucking it's only amazing. growing. It's gro- it's and you guys cool. are fucking fantastic. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for everything you do. And we do, you know, we try we to appreciate do, the fuck out of you. We guys. try to do giveaways and yep. like special things for the discord we group. Do another one. We should do another one. We should do another one. Let's do one. Let's, Let's do, do one it. next week. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should give uh, something a little special to everybody that came and helped out. On, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Anybody that came and actually showed up for all that. We're going to take care of you. My take sweet, care of you, my baby sweet girls. little baby boy. Um, so get in the discord. That is the moral <coughs> of the story. Yep. If you don't want to go down to the description, it's discord dot g g forward slash forward slash two a pro pro. yeah literally discord dot g g slash two a pro yep do it okay okay when it comes to women carrying firearms i'd like to hear your take on this topic do you think that women open carrying firearms invites more unwanted attention from anti-gunners oc critics karens criminals and fuds who question their abilities or would conceal carrying put them at an equitable amount of risk of an attempted victimization from a criminal. That's very well worded. It was. Yeah, I like are that. Are we assuming that the women are... Are you assuming their gender? Are you <laughs> Are you assuming their gender? Um, well, Matilda, I guess I'd have to answer your, your question with another question. Um, How many abidiginals do you see modeling? W- w- and this is, in all, in all fairness, why, uh, what... Honestly, like, what are the what are the women actually even doing out of the kitchen? I don't know. I don't let my dishwasher go outside the house. Yeah, so I'm not. I don't. That's un- a I warranty don't under- repair claim. I don't under- I don't understand the premise of the question. Right? No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking, guys. To all uh, you feminist men out there, uh, that was a joke. Is it? Yes, all the way a joke. Joking. I'm joking. I'm I'm fucking joking. I'm not. I am not a sexist. I have two daughters. I can't be. I have to be a feminist. Go girls. Go team. Um. So, uh, that is no. It's a good question. Like, would would would, can I sum it up? Is open now. I'm just gonna sum it up from my the knowledge off the top of my dome face. Um, Dome face. Would women? Would it be more of a determinant? Would, deterrent. Would it be more of a deterrent, deterrent if women carried openly? This is what I deal with when I'm God, editing the course. I, know. I can't tell <laughs> words. Dip, 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 dip. Words. Um, would it be more of a deterrent if women carried openly? Or would it put them in a... Um, I didn't understand what the negative would be about women carrying openly. Did he propose that in his question? No, I think... Uh, yes, maybe. Um, Let's check it out. Sorry, it would guys, be, for you... Do you think women open carrying would invite more unwanted attention from anti-gunners, OC, Karen's criminals? Oh, but see, okay, so if that's the only negative. Or would or would carrying concealed put them at more of a risk? Carrying concealed is always gonna put I I would I run under the assumption that carrying concealed always puts anybody at more of a risk because to an extent, there's two situations here to answer the question practically. If somebody is going to do is going into a place to do a lot of damage, right, to multiple people, they're going to take the people out that they can see have firearms, right? That is going to be the first one to go. If you're in a if you're in a convenience store and some guy plans on shooting and robbing the clerk, yeah. he's going to shoot you too because right. you have a gun and he knows it. Right. Whereas he may psychopaths exist. Right. Where yeah. he may just go in and shoot the clerk while you're in there and take it, but he's going to canvas the store if he sees you carrying openly. Then sure, it puts you at a risk of something like that. But I would venture to say that if somebody sees a female carrying a gun, then that female is going to be a lot safer than the target behind her who doesn't appear to be carrying a gun, even if she is con- carrying concealed, because the assailant does not know if that woman is carrying a firearm or not. Would it be fair to say that? Perhaps. My brain, my my tiny, tiny little brain. The tiniest. The tiniest of brains. is tiny. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Your bird brain. My bird brain. <laughs> Part of me kind of thinks that it's more of a herd immunity kind of thing. You know, to break out some buzzwords. I think that a society in large that carries open, like if there were multiple people carrying open, it's more of a deterrent than a single. Okay. Right? Because like I said, psychopaths exist. And if someone's determined on doing something nuts, they're going to do something nuts. Right. And if they notice someone carrying open, they'll probably take them out first. But 
the majority of people are not psychopaths and the majority of robbers and criminals, thugs, rapists, whatever it may be, they're genuinely fucking cowards. Right. So if they were to see right. a fi- right, yep. they, if they were to see a firearm, they would probably avoid the situation at whole. They'll go for a softer target. Right. They'd go for a softer target. It's right. like it's like the idea of, you know, the sign in the front yard that we don't call 911, we'll just shoot you. Right. Right. We'll kill you. Maybe I'll just go to the house that, maybe do- that go, doesn't have that sign. Maybe I'll go to the I vote for Biden house. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. just throwing it out just, there. Just throwing it out Probably there. doesn't have a gun. Yep. Most likely. Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Probably. Yep. But, you know, so that's where my mind kind of goes. In my personal opinion, I think open carry's fucking sick. Yeah. I think it's pretty gangster. Okay. But I kind of also, may, probably because it's from my martial arts background, yeah. my instructor was always very adamant in the, like, you don't talk to people about this. You don't tell people you do martial arts. And here I am I'm telling, telling people the world. <laughs> I do martial arts. <laughs> Cat's out of the bag. Um, I can't hide it with what I do. But he was like, you don't just like discuss it. You don't right. show people, right? Sure. Um, you don't walk around with a martial arts t-shirt on. You don't walk around right. with a with shirt a tap that out says, t-shirt. I am a, I am a <laughs> with the tap out t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I go to MMA classes. I do BJJ. You see my ears? Jesus <laughs> Christ, dude. Or wear affliction. Yeah. 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 That'll... But, uh. But so maybe it's because of that that mm-hmm. I'm always a little bit more predisposed to liking a concealed carry option. Okay. Of like, hey, you don't know who's around you. But again, that falls into the necessity of a well-armed populace. Right. Because <clears throat> in today's society, we don't face a well-armed populace. Yeah. Well, right. kind of. If if in there, we need more. Yeah. We do. We need more responsible so, gun owners to carry. Here's a question. Yes. <clears throat> do you think it would it is more of a deterrent for now if let let's just say in a hypothetical world that open carry was the only legal way to carry and concealed carry was illegal and let's take it the other direction and say open carry was always illegal everywhere and concealed carry was only legal if you take these two tests of one is legal and one is not okay. which one would be more effective I would say probably open but th- so, that's, again, the herd immunity kind that, of idea, right? Right. But in that event, I would actually argue to say that concealed carry is more effective because then you right, don't cause know. Because if you, you don't know. Because if you don't see a gun, then you right. assume they don't have the gun. Right. And so then you attack that soft And then it target. wouldn't actually show the numbers of who is and who isn't. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because you could go in, you could gauge, you could go, only one. Right. Right. That's There's a good a, point. You know what I mean? That's a very good point. So- it, I think, um, for for females who typically are the softest of targets, and I'm not trying, I'm not saying that to be a dick. I'm just saying it's that just because the they are is. the most vulnerable. It's just the way it is that having them be allowed to open carry, absolutely. And dude, if if you know places like California who doesn't allow open carry would actually have some sort of a sack or a heart or uh, cared about its community, they would, and I would be completely. I would look, I'm not okay with the law as it is. I'd be a lot more okay with it if they said, you know what? Women can carry openly. Men can't, but women can. Yeah. Right. So if that were even a thing, I'm not advocating for for that. I'm advocating for everybody to be able to do whatever the fuck they want, whenever they want, when it comes to the second amendment. But at least if you could get there, maybe we'll have a starting point of people being able to be more secure. Right. How many women are going to get attacked, raped, anything of that nature, while they are absolutely openly and very clearly carrying a firearm. I, right. I just, I can't imagine that that would, I, I can only imagine that these things would happen less and less. Well, maybe it's because I'm a little loco mm-hmm. that I look at it and I go, but the, again, this is my analytical brain of not an actual psychopath of okay. who does not want to do harm to other people. Right. But I examine and I go, well, if I did want to take this person out, this is how I would do it. Okay, I got right? it. Right? So like... And I'm thinking like if a law like that were to go into place, then it would clearly have to be... There would there would be standards where there would be no gun registration per se, but there would have to be menstrual cycle registration and you'd only be able to carry three weeks out of the month. So you register your menstrual cycle and then that week that you're menstruating, I, I think it would be fair to say that, like, look, you're not allowed to carry a firearm during that week. How about we just protect that our fucking women? Yes, that's completely <laughs> fair. That's a, <laughs> hey, listen, throughout history, <laughs> women have been banned from the temples, okay? Uh, 
No, but dude, it's just, it's hard. It's hard, man. That's a hard question. Cause I want women to be fucking protected. Yeah. And my question is what is our job as men? How do we help that as men? Right. Yeah. Cause I would love, I would love for my woman to be able to walk around completely not worried about it. Right. And when she's with me, she doesn't have to. Yeah. Um, I can only think harsher punishment could be a thing. Blood stop eagling. letting, stop letting fucking, uh, you know, rapists out of jail, like the second you rape and it's proven and it was a violent, you know, a violent yeah. rape. I'm not talking about like statutory rape where the guy's fucking 18 and she's 17 and that state sucks. So that happens to be the fucking thing. I'm talking about the actual rapist out there. If you just kept them in fucking prison for the rest of their life, then maybe they wouldn't go out and do it again and again and again as they so often do. What if we had mandatory like mandatory service, okay. right? But it's it's for women, right? On how to protect themselves and use a firearm, and they're just like given a handgun when they turn eighteen. Like here you oh, go. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. And it's just like, hey, you guys Man. out there that are gonna try and do something. And then all everyone, these ladies are armed. Every single one of them. Yeah. Yeah, that could be a thing. Yeah. For sure. Well, yeah. it's crazy because uh, on in the Twitter sphere you'll see these these crazies that are talking about gun violence and how women are are uh victims and of of not only gun violence but also like domestic abuse all this nasty stuff women are very rarely the target of gun violence right it is it okay right. go ahead uh but what was funny is one uh PNW gorilla one of the guys uh, we met him out at uh, yeah. donuts range day um he posted I have a solution. Oh, and it was a picture <laughs> of his wife with a firearm and then girl, ladies training in like an all ladies class with handguns. And it's just like, yes, like that's clearly the answer here. Make women dangerous. Right. Dude, the anti gunners that jumped on that, that were like, you just want more gun violence. You just want, and it's just like, Jesus. whoa, dude. So let's talk about the fundamental disconnect in those comments then. The disconnect, the disconnect is, and this is this is the new wave of things that we're that, so we're attempting to sway public opinion inside the firearm community that you should go out and train, save your money, buy equipment that is just as good. That's probably all you're going to need anyway, right? That fair enough. Change right? so the just as good narrative. Ch yeah. yeah, change the just as good narrative is really what we're trying to do. Now that narrative, it's up to all of us too. Like if you're on social media I think, and you're, and you're a proponent for the second amendment, I think we all have a responsibility to come in and offer like not fire back with like ridiculous responses to these comments, but honestly go through and without what is What do you call it? TLDR? Too long yep. to read. Uh, what do you kids call it these what days? What do you kids call it? Just Pound sign. TLDR it and offer meaningful responses right. or even questions, right? Questions are great. Questions are questions great. are awesome when you're responding to shit like that because it's like, well, what do you think? Now you care about what they think, right? You're offering your opinion within the question. What do you think about if somebody said exactly that? Now you what? You want to cause more? You want to cause more gun violence by arming women? So you would pose the question maybe something like this. So are you under the assumption? And you pose it. This is a legitimate question. Are you under the assumption that? having people be able to protect themselves with firearms is increasing or decreasing um, gun violence. Do you think it would be a deterrent, right? So if you came in with questions like that, we all know what the answer is to that. It's more of a hypothetical. We right. want to see what they say. And if they respond and they're continue to be fiery and there's no legitimate or meaningful answer, you continue to kind of prod and you continue to poke. And that's one thing that I'm like actually trying to change is answer Ask questions that ha somebody would have a very hard time answering without looking like an idiot. Or look right? without looking malicious. Right. Even. Yeah. Like, or would it be fair to say that like this is actually helping to thwart gun violence right. by preventing women from being the, you know, the target of X, Y, and Z? I don't know. Like, I'm just kind like, of spitballing right no, now. No, no, yeah. Like the like a, a simply posed question to that. Do you not want women to be able to protect themselves? Exactly. You can't really say no to that. Right now, the argument is now there that that falls under one of the logical fallacies because that kind of goes against what they're arguing for. Right. They're saying, well, 
you know, women being able to protect themselves. If you're just giving everybody more guns, then you're putting more guns in the community and then Correct. they're therefore perpetuating gun violence. Okay. Okay. If that's their argument. And then we fire back with a statement like, well, do you not want women to protect themselves? It's not really what they were saying. And is that the straw man argument where you're taking, oh man, logical fallacies are the worst. Like I know that they're in there. I wish I need to really get in there and study these things be, because they interest me because it's, there are certain ways to debate and there are certain ways to not debate. And I think we should all educate ourselves on, on, on the right way to debate. And the right way to debate is follow their line of thinking down that, down that, follow that train of thought. Well, I know what their line kind of thinking of, is. It's super simple. They want people to be safe for the most part. Again, psychopaths exist. But I think we can all come on common ground. So maybe instead of that, you find the common ground first and say, I think we can all agree, assuming this is an open dialogue and conversation that is kind of right. forum based. You could say, I think we can all agree that we want women to be safe, correct? Right. Boom. Boom. They say, yes, of course I would want women to be safe. Right. You're not Great. saying that they don't. Because saying, what, you don't want women to be safe? That's where the logical fallacy kind right. of comes in. You don't want to go that route. <clears throat> so what we do is we say, so I think we can all agree we want women to be safe. Okay, yes. Do you think that it would be fair to say that women are more of a soft target than men are because they you know, are typically the ones that will be robbed and, and raped because if it is a man doing it, they will pick the softest target. Right. Sure, everybody can kind of agree on that. You're finding this like common ground within the debate and they're like, okay, this guy's listening, he's paying attention. And then at some point you have to say, so in what respect would a law-abiding citizen being a woman trying to protect herself because there was no other means of protection add more violence Right. And then you make them answer the question. Right. Now you've found common ground. Now they're not feeling attacked. Now they can start to see. And somewhere in there, and I know this sounds like kind of kumbaya of me. I, I totally admit that. But somewhere in these conversations, a seed gets planted. Right. A seed of, I had a conversation this one time with a question that I couldn't really answer. And then the next time that comes up and they can't answer it, you start to slowly, they start to slowly have these self reflections. It's not going to happen in the YouTube comments. If, if you plant enough It'll, seeds, might, eventually you'll have an orchard. Yeah, that's right. So eventually people are going to start going, huh, maybe, maybe you're talking to somebody who just recently took a stance on something, but they're still kind of on the fence. You don't know what's going on inside their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that individual had just had an uncle or a loved one take his own life with a gun. Right. And so they're going or was shot and killed at gunpoint or shot and killed yeah. at gunpoint, man. And so they're going through some shit. They're like, they're, they're I mean, and that's real shit. Like you yeah. imagine if like, I'm not saying you would look at guns any differently if a family member that you loved got shot and killed, but I'm saying that it would it would open up a sensitivity or a wound that wasn't there before. Right. Right? Yeah, and that's so fair. And so if for somebody that was on the fence about firearms and then they have a loved one get shot and killed, well, boom, now they don't fucking like them. But it's our job in the community. It really is our job. And I know it sounds crazy to fucking say that, but it is our job as a community of Americans all binding together and showing the right way that like, Hey, I get it that adding more guns into the population could increase statistically the amount of gun violence that goes up. It's just natural. It's right. like if you increase a vi if you inject a virus into more of a population, right. I think then it's it, that thing. virus would continue to grow. But what, what, where I'm going at, I, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this statistically, of course, at some level, it's going to increase nominally right but overall the effect that you get is an armed population overall the effect that you get is a government that is going to question whether or not it is going to err on the side of uh tyranny right that is going to go down that road right and so really the impact of having them is far outweighs the than the the statistical anomaly that comes with possibly more gun violence coming with more guns, if well, that makes sense. No, no, no. And gun violence, by definition, when you look at those statistics, they are going off of self-inflicted gunshot right. wounds. They go off of criminal, like the, it, police shooting the bad guy. Right. These all fall under fire. Police justified deaths. homicide. Police yeah. justified homicides, right? These all fall under gun violence. And mm -hmm. so when people just look at that statistic and they go, oh, the statistic is this, well, go ahead and take all those other anomalies out of it Right? Those things that... It's over 50%. Yeah, well over. Well, what's crazy... What's crazy... And now I don't... <clears throat> I don't want to downplay it because people dying is people dying. It sucks. Yeah. Right? We're all humans. We all want to live. But when you look at it, 
when you look at it, right, and you take those anomalies out, what was it, in 20, I think the last statistic was 45,000. Take about 50% of that out. We're left with, what, 22.5? Sure. No, yeah, sorry. No. Hey, you're you're Less. close. Less. Well, four, half, of, half, of, half of 45 is 22.5, yes. Yeah, yeah math. Okay. Um, 22.5 thousand people died from gun violence, right? Okay. From like a homicide or domestic violence, whatever it may be. Not not justified, not self-inflicted. Out of 365 million, it's pretty low. Yeah. If you think about it. And are you talking percentages or or were those numbers actual in the thousands? Like, is it 45,000? I haven't checked it's the 40, numbers lately. It's, uh, I, that, that was the last number I got. I believe that was 2023. That was 45,000 people died from gun violence. Okay. 2023... And you're right. That seems like a lot, but let's break that down in a percentage. If we're talking about twenty two thousand five hundred, while you look okay. at so December seventh, twenty twenty three, at least forty thousand one hundred and sixty seven people had died from gun violence. Okay, forty thousand. Forty thousand. Okay, that's that's what I'm seeing here. Okay, but we know that at least twenty thousand of that, we we do right. was self inflicted. Of course, yeah, those numbers have already been shown. So if we take twenty thousand and we divide that by the three hundred and sixty five million people. In, inside the United States, the number that we get is, <clears throat> so I'm going to do this as a percentage mm -hmm. for you guys. It is 0 .00, uh, 0 0.0005 percent. That's a small percentage. Yeah. No, no, I'm, and not, Again, not 5 percent, 0 .0005 percent. Yeah, because I multiply that by 100. And now, yeah. No, I'm sorry. If I multiply that by 100 to give to get a percentage, uh, divide. Uh, here we go. Adding, dividing, all the things. Yeah. So it's 0 0.005 percent. That is a very, very small, small, small percentage of the population. So which you would take those odds any day, right? Right. Right. So now globally, 60, 684,000 people die from falling every year. Say again. Globally. Okay. 684,000 people die from falling every year. <laughs> okay. Let's go with, uh, which. what's the next one you're going to put in? Cars? Car accidents in the United States? Uh, you should. Hold okay. on. Okay. I'll run. Because uh, I'm getting global gun violence. Deaths in U.S. annually. So, uh, so in 2019. 43,000. There are 43,000 fatal car crashes per year just in the United States. So in the U.S., in the, more, just the, more people died yes. from fatal car crashes yes. than violent crime. With, right, with and if you're firearm. talking about that 20,000 mark, you're talking about over 200%, two times the amount of people died in a car accident than a violent crime. Catch this. In 2019, more than 250,000 people died worldwide from gun violence. 250,000? 250,000 died from gun violence. I had assumed. But 680, what was that? 684,000 died from falling. And you know that they're stacking the numbers of... Uh, of the gun uh, violence. Of, well, they're, they're, they're going to be incorporating probably numbers from conflicts and wars and... Probably. I, I, gar I guarantee it. all yeah. that's in there. Because like... Guarantee all that's Because they're there. definitely not trying to add up the, the falling. No. I feel like everybody's really pretty stacked. solid with that. They're like, yeah, you died from falling. All right, mark that down as falling. Yeah. Well, if we just... You know, if we could find a way to outlaw ladders or make ladders safer by forcing people and putting laws into place that actually attach them to a ladder... We just need the Wally chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. I... I really think that, um, yeah, we've got a, we've got an uphill battle for sure. Uh, it's only going to get worse. I can't imagine though, going back to that talk we were having before, what do we do about it as, as, as citizens? We, I mean, we, we, we go out with pitchforks and we, we pick it and we, and we cause a scene and cause a fuss. What nah. is that? What's that going to do? Gonna it do. doesn't do anything. The only thing that we can do is train more. Buy more guns, protect ourselves, protect our family, train, 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 train. Would, because was, the day will come that the government's going to do some dumb shit. Let, let me rephrase that. The government's going to do some government shit. And that's, that's what they always do. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's at that point in time where we need to...
be able to protect ourselves because the reality is, man, it's not even going to be, by the time it comes down to that, we're thinking about like our government. We think like our government currently as it sits. That is not the direction that it's going. Our government is being funded, pushed, thwarted by foreign entities. Right. People are being put in place to do it. You look at what happened in the, uh, if we, we, we got to talk about this real quick, what's happening to our own military. What did they do with the military? They required them all to get COVID vaccinations. The ones that wouldn't get it, the, the people who stood up and said, I will not do it. I right. will not follow that order. They, uh, excused them from the military. So some of the most, some of the best, most prolific operators or, or members of the military that we have seen were probably the ones that said, absolutely, that is not my right. So the ones that actually stood by their constitutional rights not to do the thing are now not part of the military anymore. Right. And you're left with a military full of no offense to the people that are out there currently serving in the military. But now after that, basically what did they do? They weeded out all of the sheepdogs and they kept all the sheep. And they weeded out the people who stand by their conviction. Yep. So now what happens when the government says, go do a thing? You're going to have a whole lot less people saying, I will not do that thing. Right. Because they've already got rid of them via COVID. Right. And now what they need to do is start recruiting more people into the military. And now the way their opportunity to do that now, just like the senator from Illinois started uh, proposing, is, well, if we have illegal immigrants who want to retain their citizenship, guess what we could do? Put we'll put them in the military, and then they can retain the citizenship even though they got here illegally. Well, what does that prompt nations to do? Okay, well now, and who knows who that fucking guy is being paid by, because now Funnel what we've got- many immigrants- What's the, C what's the, the CCP yeah. going to do? They're going to do exactly what they're doing right now, which is send military age males into the United States who don't have families, by the way. Why don't they have families? Because they have overstocked the men in that country. They have overstocked the testosterone driven men in that country to come over to the United States, right? Yeah. To find their way over here, get into any level of government or the military, and then do the thing that they've been asked to do by the very people who are funding those senators and electing the people that are in our government so that when we eventually have a military who will do whatever the government says because whether it's right right whether it's wrong whether it violates their oath of the constitution we're fucked right. we're absolutely fucked then it's the full force of the military right who absolutely doesn't question anything so what thing can or has you no do moral compass towards the united states right because they didn't grow up here so they don't give a fuck they just want their citizenship oh absolutely yeah yeah they don't care yeah and what's worse is somebody who not just doesn't give a fuck, but does give a fuck and doesn't like the United States that is getting into these positions of not only power or even not power. It could just be from the lowest private, uh, you know, man in the mod deuce in a, in a, in a gun truck. Right. right. So, yeah. Hey, shoot those civilians over there. No problem. Okay. Got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's my biggest fear. And, you know, there was uh, I, I heard a <laughs> I heard a quote that a guy that Tucker had on his show said, and it was fucking awesome. It, it wasn't even a quote. He just said it. And then Tucker was like, fuck, I'm going to get that tattooed on me. And I was like, I want to get that tattooed on me. And it said, and I'm paraphrasing here and I'm going to totally botch it, but it, it goes something like this. We should, we can, we can stop punishing ourselves for theories that used to seem crazy that are now becoming truth. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Basically, the shit that used to be crazy mm -hmm. is starting to be true. And we should stop punishing ourselves for thinking the way that we've been thinking. It makes me and feel the, even crazier, the to be thing, honest with you. The thing that the, the shit that I just said, like in the last, you know, few minutes of me talking, that even ten years ago would have seemed insane to oh, say yeah. publicly. You would have been thrown in a loony bin, dude. Dude, like people just look at you like you're fucking nuts. Yeah, but yeah. we're getting to this point where it's like it's not crazy anymore. No. It's just not, it's not that nuts anymore to think that maybe we are only a generation away from like really bad shit happening to us in this country. And the Quite only possible. way that we can stop it, especially in that short amount of time, is by arming, arming ourselves and, and training. Yeah. And truly being prepared. I can and not just with armament. I mean, it, it, it's got to be with everything. You got to have your water ready to go, some way to communicate, radios, like all the things that you would need to keep your loved ones alive. Do you have a generator? Do you have blankets? Do you have food right. for the winter? Do you know how to grow food? Do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to, right. do you know how to rebuild your roof? Right. Right? It's not all about, I'm going to go train with nods every night. No. It's not it's all not. about that. You should, because it's sick. Yeah. But, 
but I, I wanted to touch on this a second ago. Um, I think that is such an important part of the Second Amendment that needs to be really brought up more and more and more is our responsibility as gun owners, as dangerous citizens, right? Tackett yep. talks a lot about being a dangerous dad. Right. Which, yes, you should be. You should be an absolute fucking unit. Um, but just as a individual gun owner, mm -hmm. you should be as fucking proficient and trained as possible because it's a martial art. It is a, in the hands of a human being, it can be dangerous. Right. And it is up to us to be as proficient with it as possible. Yeah. We're signing that contract when we decide, hey, I am now in control of my protection and this is how I'm going to do it. We're signing that contract of it is now my fucking responsibility yeah. to be as efficient and dangerous with this thing, as competent as I can possibly be with this. What is your thought on this? Now, this is contentious, but it would fully secure our nation. I, I truly believe this. If we basically indoctrinated the youth, but if, 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 if straight to Hitler youth, well, program. <laughs> but when born in the United States of America at a reasonable age of being able to make decisions, we establish something that you take an oath to your constitution that you can stay here and preserve our freedoms not by joining the military, but just by exercising your freedoms as the American citizen by by saying, listen, this is what freedom of speech is. This is what, you know, the Second Amendment involves. Here are the freedoms that we can enjoy um, uh, throughout the entire Constitution, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. You take an oath to your Constitution and what it represents and that this is the doctrine that is going to propel us forward into a free society or you get the fuck out of this country, dude. Would that be too much? Is that too much to, to ask? Because A, yeah, it's not your fault being born into a country that has an amazing constitution that is su supposed to be the document that preserves your freedom, not just the document, the entire framework that preserves our freedom. And you have the opportunity, unlike places like North Korea where you can't get out, they keep you in there, right? right? You have the opportunity, every opportunity to go. In fact, could it come with a stipend that says, instead of funding the immigrants that are coming in that shouldn't be here, which we clearly do through their path to from Ecuador into South America and up the Panamanian channels, right? Instead of funding that coming in, we fund them to go out. No, We say, I, we're going to take all this money and say, hey, here's a nice little thing for you. If you don't want to stick around, you can have this money and you could go to X, Y, or Z place. I, I, I kind of agree with it. I think is I kind of agree. Is it fucking psychotic to no, think no, no, that no. way? I, <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so. I think... I think Obviously, there's a lot of gray area in there, and obviously, there, there's a there would be a lot that needs to go into that. But I agree with that, though. I, I kind of agree with that. Like, hey, less indoctrination and more of what my grandparents had, because I feel like my grandparents' generation was that. It was Where like they were this actually, is the fucking constitution. This is what our country stands. This is for. what history. This, this is, is this is what happened. This is what really happened in history without us having to rewrite it. For right. Our this children. is what my grandparents died for. Yeah. This is what like my parents died for. Right. I built this for you, and now this is what you'll die for for your kid. Right. Yeah. And your your generations to go on. And I feel like that has kind of lost with uh with with the generations. Like you don't see these these hard grizzled men that are like. I worked 14 hours in the coal mines yeah, well, for a dollar a day to feed my family. Like, well, we, and and nor should we have that because no, 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 because our our economy has evolved Correct. and through economic development of our country, we've been able to prosper past the point where everybody's got to dig a hole to do a thing. Right. But right? but my point getting on with that was we had these we had these families. Not I don't want to say just men, but we had these families that appreciated what America stood for. Patriotism. Patriotism, right? And we don't have that anymore. And for those who are wondering, patriotism and love of America does not mean love for one's government. It means the opposite, in fact. Yeah, it means for it means a love for our inherent freedoms, not that the Constitution gives us, but freedoms that we're inherently born with. Right. Freedoms that we should all be given as human beings, not Correct. just in the United States, but throughout the entire world. So I kind of I kind of agree with that sentiment of like once you hit 18, yeah. right? Like once once you grow up and hit 18, you get the choice. It's like, hey, do you want to swear an oath to the Constitution 
that you will do your best to uphold life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. You will abide by the amendments of the Constitution, rights that you're born with as a human being, the right to freedom of speech, self-defense, so on. Or you want to yeah. get out. Or you hit the road. Because we'll, we got a ticket for you if you want to. Yeah. Because what we want here is people who are going to uphold human rights. Right. Yep. And like it sounds crazy. Yeah. It's so, kind of. It kind of. Na- kind of. Kind of. But also to that to that degree, it's the same idea of like joining a book club or joining mm. a, a gym. Yeah. Like, hey, do you sign this contract that you are going to do X, Y, and Z? And yeah. it's like, we obviously we want to welcome people in. We want to build relationships. We want to build communities. But to an extent... And I've had to do this with my own brain for we're, social media. We're just real quick. Yeah. I, I just think we're so concerned about keeping peace. The Well, no, we're, we're so concerned about keeping the wrong people out. Now, some of us are obviously people who think like us are, we're concerned about pe- keeping the wrong people out, but maybe we should also be just as concerned bringing about the right people in, not, not no. even about bringing the right people in Boy, right there going. because there are channels to bringing the right people in. Right. It's we're so concerned about, keeping the wrong people out, but maybe we should be more concerned about getting the wrong people out. Ooh, that's a good, yes. Let's, you know, and that's mm-hmm. the whole point that I'm trying to make. Maybe we've just got the wrong motherfuckers in this country. And I think that is the absolute truth. Yeah. There are yeah. just too many people who have never been outside of the borders of the United States to genuinely see anything they haven't seen in the news. And what's like crazy, actual fucking communists in the United States that are fucking right. these entitled kids. Yeah. Dude, it, Bro. What, the thing that's mind blowing to me is what changed my entire perspective on an appreciation towards the United States. I would not have near the patriotism that I had, had I not gone overseas and seen how other people were how, how other people lived, how other people were treated, what tyrannical government looked like. And, and <clears throat> the way that my, my mind, my mindset completely changed when I was like, damn, we got a good, damn, we got a good over in the United States. We got it so fucking good when I was seeing no running water, absolutely just complete destitute economies over in the Middle East. And not just that, but they couldn't say the things that they wanted to say. Women couldn't walk down the road without a man next to them. They had to cover their fucking face. They couldn't drive a car. I mean, these things are just inherent rights that every human being should have that were taken away from them, but they don't know any better. And so they just accept it where we, the thing that blows my mind is this, is the fact that I just assumed, okay, man, this was eye opening. Everybody should have the experience that I just had. But the problem is we have this access to all of this information, meaning There is nobody in the United States that doesn't have the opportunity to see exactly what I saw digitally Mm -hmm. by simply a few Google searches of how does this place operate or just turn on the news and watch what's happening over there. Yet with all of this information, with all of this access to how the rest of the world lives and with all of this access to history books that you could just download on your fucking phone and read them. We are still in the most unappreciated, unpatriotic state that I feel like we have ever been in. How the fuck is that possible? With all of the information showing how good we've got it compared to the rest of the world. Dude, I don't know. I feel like it's partially, I feel like it's partially just the the loud minority with with how tech companies work and they push these, push these narratives. Right. Right. I feel like it might be that, but you know. I know I'm I, I've and I'm talking from my of, of course just looking at it from from personal experience and talking you know talking directly even to Republicans people that are like yes I'm, I'm proud to be an American mm-hmm. guy guys got the American flag waving in his front yard these guys are just because you put up the American flag it, it doesn't doesn't mean a, a whole lot because what happens is you get in conversations with them like we're having right now right. and they look at you like you're kind of fucking crazy. Right. Like why do you think like this? Right. Right. But we think like this because that's exactly what it represents and we've got to keep this at the forefront of our minds if we want generations of our youth to be able to prosper like we have. And so it's it's not just the that loud minority that we're talking about from tech companies. This is we're talking about apathy. We're talking about a, a pure apathetic society where I define apathy 
as oh well apathy is de- not I define apathy is defined as just kind of not giving a shit one way or the other and so you find this apathetic kind of mindset even for the self declared patriotic human who's I'm flying the flag out in the front yard and I've got a job and I take care of my family and absolutely that's a good start. But if you're not concerned about the well-being of the citizens and you're not doing anything about it, and I'm not talking about just going out and shooting guns, but truly participating in the conversation, then are you? You know, and it's just a question. I'm not saying you're not patriotic if that's not the case, but are but are you? Like are you a true patriot if you're not doing anything about it? If you're not involved in it in some way, shape, or form. If you're not educating your kids on the things that you need to educate because the school system is not going to do it. No, school system, fuck. Any it's opportunity fucked. that I have yeah. of, dad, why do you do the gun thing or why why this or why that? You it, immediately I, hop I, in. Oh, yeah. my God, I take advantage of every opportunity. I know my kid is curious. I know she's listening. I know she's going to be, um, you know, and I, and I don't explain it to her nearly like I explain it like we talk in here. It's, it's for very, you know, it's just a very <sighs> – reasonable conversation that you would have with any 10 year old, which is this is used. It's just look around you. Do you like your life? Yeah. Right. And, and do you, do you, do you have food in your belly and a, and a roof over your house? And they're like, yeah, I know. So that's because we are protected. These things are protected by the second amendment. And that's why dad does what he does. Right. Like these, these are the fundamental, you know, freedoms that we get to enjoy that other kids don't. And we constantly, like when I see something on TV or I see something pop up on the news and it shows a destitute uh, country, a third world country, somebody that's impoverished, somebody that um, hasn't quite, you know, showing, you know, the starving children commercials, whatever it is, I always take that as an opportunity to show my kids like, look, this is the way people live that aren't here, you know, and you get those kids that are at the border just trying to get into the United States. God bless them right? Because they're with their parents that are trying to get over here too. Then you look at that and say, look, you're here. They want to be here. Yeah. They they want it so bad that that they're drowning in this river trying to get here. And you're here. You didn't even have to do anything. You just had to wake up. And we have these ungrateful fucks that are trying to turn here into where these people are trying to run from. Yeah. So if you want them here so fucking bad, then trade for them. Yeah. Trade for them. Put your money. Switch your spot. Put your money where your fucking mouth is and then Go say, listen, I'm willing to give up my citizenship so that that person can have theirs. Right. Are you willing to fucking do that? No. Absolutely fucking Fuck not. Fuck no. No, you're too fucking comfortable. That's the, that is the fucking problem that we have. So until you were ready to do that and give up your fucking spot so that somebody can come in here that didn't follow the rules and regulations of those hardworking men and women who do immigrate into this country legally, then get fucked. You don't have a voice. Straight up. Straight up, dude. Straight up. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I completely, yeah, dude. You want to start violating law to allow people to come into this country as they're not supposed to, then why don't you take it the next step and give up your right for them? Yeah, switch with them. Switch. Switch. Go back into that village. Except in you fact, won't because it's a virtue signal because you want to make it look like you're for them. Yeah. But you still want to enjoy all the fucking benefits that the United States has. Yeah, absolutely. So was there, what was the... Uh, you know, and this and talking about the dangerous dad thing, it was, it was it was really this was an interesting piece of the conversation when my wife and I were talking about we were watching that fear movie last night with Mark Wahlberg. Can you hold that for one second? Yeah, do you got to pee? pee? My pants. Yeah, pee your pant your panties. I've had TBS recently, which for those who don't know is called tiny, tiny bladder, bladder syndrome. syndrome. Yeah, um, I've been trying to drink a lot more water recently. That's good. I've been dehydrated, so I'm just trying to do that. But I have had tiny bladder. Yeah. It's the worst. I've peed like 10 <clears throat> times. Today. I think you just have AIDS. It's probably AIDS. Anyways, so, this fear, this, this movie. Uh, so going back to this movie, yes. and the only reason I bring it up is because it's, it's the interesting uh, psychology, the psychological differences between my wife and I and the political differences and just the way her and I think, mm-hmm. um, which is not a bad thing. I like the fact that my wife is, uh, you know, leans more left and is more liberal and I can have like legitimate conversations and I don't live in that fucking echo chamber that we were talking about recently. But, you know, she said, it, it's funny because my immediate response to her, so this dude, when he first comes into the family unit and they meet him, he, you know, he starts getting a little more aggressive towards the dad. She said, she said, do you think, she goes, what do you think you would do? Because her mentality was, what would happen if your daughter met somebody like that? What would happen if your daughter brought somebody like that back to the house? What would happen if that person did to him what he did to you, which was kind of flex up on him and, 
kind of, you know, puff up on him and, and do his thing. And my answer was, it wouldn't happen in the first place. It wouldn't happen in the no. first place because my daughters know that like Tackett talks about, like I'm a dangerous dad. Like you're not going to walk into my castle yeah. and throw your weight around because the thing in the video was he walked in, he did a thing, he said a thing and the dad just kind of took it. And I was like, that would never happen. It may, it may occur. That event may occur, but that would be it. That would be the last time that ever happened. Because he was like, oh, okay, you know, have a good night. He was a fucking weenie, dude. Yeah. He was a weenie. And I don't say he's a pussy, and I'm trying to get away from that word because pussy is very powerful. I think we can all attest to that. Pussy can take a pounding. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a good call. <laughs> so, uh, listen, but that, it I've just, known more pussy that can take more of a beating. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <clears throat> you know, when you're, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're below average going into it, then you're going to have to do a lot more work. That's right. Right. Isn't that, the, isn't that the truth? I put in three times. I put in three times the effort. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know I was there. For any normal guy that gets, you know, the full seven inches in, I've got to do that three times. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Um, no, that's, that's, that's it, that, it's just, it wouldn't happen in the first place because the second that, that was tested it would get shot down and anybody that lets that happen is you know for lack of a better sense a weenie so it was interesting because she was like well what what would happen after that like what would you do i was like it would never get after that it, it would never yeah. get to the fucking point that that even happened yeah. in the first place because the second i met the first guy the second i meet the first guy that my daughter dates he's gonna understand that like i would give my life for that child like i will absolutely turn my own card in so that you are not able to hurt her. So right. don't ever, don't ever hurt her. And I'm not saying like don't break her heart, because you know, shit happens. Shit dudes happens. are dudes. I'm a dude. I'm an asshole. Hearts are gonna get broken. I've broken I'm a heart. Yeah. yeah I'm not talking proud about, of it. I'm talking about like I am so terrified of the man that is is behind that is behind her supporting her and defending her that I would never lay a finger on her and I would never do her any harm. Right. Now it doesn't matter. I'm not talking about like, oh, you fucking said some mean shit to me today. Of course no, that stuff's going to happen. And I'm not trying to act like a tough guy, but I genuinely know that I would lay down my life for my daughters. And so no one's going to walk into my house and, and, and behave like that because they'll know right out the gate who I am and, 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 and what I mean. And I'm not saying like, do it disrespectfully. I can't stand the, he's going to come in my house and I'm cleaning my guns. That is dumb shit. You're clean. Come on. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on. Everybody's come like, come in my house and clean my guns. He's just going to understand guns aside. Sans the guns. Type, sans guns. Guns aside. Take guns out of the conversation that we are the type of human being that is not going to allow that to happen one well, way or the other. So. I, feel, I feel like part of that comes into, um, and now I'm saying this as someone without children, mm -hmm. but from an outside perspective, I feel like this kind of falls into a little bit of the the daughter's the daughter's realm of setting that that idea of who the father is right what she's learned to respect for herself yeah from from the love of the father but also too of the like genuine fear that this guy should have of the father right i think that should i think that should be back again think, a little bit more well i think there should be a legitimate fear of of any father. I mean, I can, oh, I, can yeah. I can, I can honestly tell you this, like, um, I fear I, Carly's I'm, dad. I fear, <laughs> I fear my wife's dad. I would too. Yeah. I've I'm, seen that I'm man. Fucking terrified. Of <laughs> yeah. That guy's a yeah, monster. Not dude. a lot of people scare me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm, I'm as respectful as I can be around him. I know how much love he has for his daughter. I know the lengths that he's willing to go for his daughter. I understand up, that. Yeah. He would put, yeah. in the whole family. Yeah. I mean, it's a Sikh, it's a Sikh family. Yeah, you know, my, um, you know, my for those of you that don't know that are just watching, my wife is Indian, she's Punjabi, and her family is, and like they're not to be fucked with. No. And I know he would lay down his life for his daughter. I know that at any given time, and I'm not talking about, you know, doing her wrong or anything like that. It's that if I don't take care of her, and I'm not talking about him killing me. That's not that's not what's what's happening here. Yeah. I'm not talking about like I'm scared that she's not gonna be happy and he's gonna come, he's gonna come murder no. me. The conversation is I wouldn't want to be in a position that I ever had to explain to him that I cannot take care of your daughter and your grandchildren. Like I am, I'm not working hard enough or, I mean, it was, it was a, a huge component of me stopping uh, drinking. Mm -hmm. Right. 
the fact that I was, that I had PTSD and I'm also consuming alcohol, that is that I could not provide or be around my family in an effective capacity and then had to explain that to her dad because I've had those conversations with him. He's being, why are you behaving like this? You know, it's terrifying because I'm like, this dude means business. I'm not okay having to explain. I want him to be proud of me just as he is his own kids. Right. And I, I, you know, it, but if he was a deadbeat, if he was an idiot, if he was a guy that Wouldn't like was care. the opposite of who he actually who is, right. then I wouldn't care. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, of course, if, if I, and if I was a shit bag all at the same time, right. then it would be a lot less meaningful to me to ever make a change or, 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 or do anything different. Yeah, you're like, but you're I, a shit bag. Why but, are you talking to me? Exactly. Right. But if you represent that type of person, if the guy that is dating your daughter sees you as a representation of somebody who has taken care of her, he is going to want to at least match that equally. Right. At least any reasonable human would. So I'm giving a lot of credit to humanity right now. Right. But any reasonable he man is going to come into a situation and say, what's her dad's like? Dad, like, oh, he's a, he's a, he's a put together dude who would put his life on the line for his family. I should probably do the same thing because that is his expectation. Right. Really? Well, that's, I mean, that's why you had to. That's it, it, why so, you had to ask for daughter's hand in marriage. That's why right. you had to ask for the blessing. Yeah. Right. It's because yeah. the father would go, "No, yeah, you're not good enough." <laughs> right. Right. Yep. 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 Still haven't got my dowry. <sighs> I heard that was a thing in the Indian culture. Really? Yeah. Well, dowries. I, I was just hearing from Emma. They have red letters in Taiwan. What is that? Uh, where so when you get married, yeah, you get a red letter, which okay. is money essentially so mm. instead of like gifts of like uh here's a waffle maker here's a coffee machine they give you fucking cash right they give yeah. you this red letter right, right, full yeah. of money okay yeah. and so right. what they do is like for example they give you a red letter and you're expected to match it or more for their wedding oh got it right interesting okay yeah so lots of money is thrown around at an indian wedding we had a hybrid kind of american and indian wedding between my wife and i our whole family uh, like from England, uh, some of which who had immigrated from India, they came out and it was this big thing and they give a lot of gifts and they give a lot of uh, money. But what that stems from is the inherent culture of when a, when a woman is, when you're marrying your daughter off the man, because I, now I may totally fuck this up, but from I, what I think I remember from my wife explaining to me in the culture is that to take care of a woman is I, for lack of a better word, it is a, it is a financial burden. Okay. So, <laughs> and, and the, I don't the, disagree. Having, <laughs> having the understanding that I no longer have to take care of her and now you will be taking care of right. her. And I kind of, I'm so autistic. I go between these. I lines. know. I've been have watching you, that. Have you noticed this? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but that I'm not taking care of her. Now you're taking care of her. You offer a dowry which is a sum of money and property that basically says this was mine and now it's yours to help take care of this uh, individual that I used to take care of. Right. Right. So you marry her off with the money. I still, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting, guys. Come on. Where's it at? <laughs> Where is it? Where's it at? Maybe because the woman that I married already had a even a more advanced degree than I did and took care of herself and actually made more money than I did when I met her. So no, that's, dude, that's probably, bullshit. That's probably, <laughs> Where's that's the probably, culture? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. I met her when I was like serving. I was like after I graduated, but I had like still technically it was like serving tables at that time. I think I was a total idiot. I don't know what she saw in me. Probably potential, but it was the blonde hair. It was, the, <laughs> it was the opposite of yeah. I know. And for me, like growing up, my crush, like everybody's got that Disney crush. Right. You know what I mean? Jasmine. Some guys. Some it was the Little Mermaid. Dude, Jasmine was mine. It was Jasmine, dude. Yeah, it was just like when like Wayne walked into or he walked by the uh, guitar shop in Wayne's World and he looked at it and said, "She will be mine." She will. Be oh mine. yes, she will be mine. Uh, that was me every time I saw Jasmine in Aladdin. I was like, she will she, be mine. She will be mine. Oh, yeah, she will. She be. will. Does that make me like a cartoonophile? Or? No, dude, because you were like, mm -hmm. what, 10? I was younger than she was Yeah. while I was watching that cartoon. Exactly. Yeah, cool. So, right on. Yeah. Yeah, well said. Ca cartoonophile? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's not a word, is it? No, I don't know. I'm going to Google it. Yeah, I don't think so. But there's a file for anything, right? Yeah. Probably. Like hemophiles love blood. It's a good point. Yeah, there's a. Yeah. yeah, I think it just means like you love the thing. 
Hmm. So, yeah, hmm. throw a file behind something. Just throw a file behind it. Yeah. <laughs> well, with uh, that bit of information. Yeah, no. yeah so, I, I mean, I think it would be reasonable to kind of wrap up with, because uh, we've, we've been going for a minute yeah. now, yeah? Yeah, we've been going for about hour 40. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, I've got I've got nothing else on the blotter for today, unless you've got something else on the docket. I've, I've got a couple. I've got a okay. meme. Yeah, no, I've got a meme yeah drop a meme like, in here. Let's fucking chat about it for I, five to ten. I don't want to throw out there. And by the way, sorry about missing last week, guys. We were super super busy. Yep. Super busy. Yep. Uh, we were incredibly busy, so <laughs> yeah. we'll try not to do it again. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. Um, this is it says the most American shit ever, and it says eight percent of Americans say they think they could beat a lion in a fist fight. And the reason I wanted to share this is because I saw this and I was like, that's me. That's I'm, me. The 8%. I'm the 8%. I'm the 8 I was like, I probably could, you know, maybe with some luck in there. Yeah. I might be able to take a lion in a fist fight. I might be able to. Yeah. I might be able to. Yeah. But like out of all of the animals in the animal kingdom, yeah. right? That's Dude. one of the bigger animals that I feel like I might be able to. Okay, so what was the question that was posed to us the other day that I found kind of preposterous oh, because dude. the answer okay. seemed so incredibly easy. This is dumb, okay? okay. Which w it, it was, you're trapped inside of a mall. Right. Would mm -hmm. you rather be trapped inside of the mall with a fully grown <laughs> silverback gorilla or... What was it, like, like eight black mambas? Eight black or five, five black Five black mamb mambas. Five black mambas. Listen. Which is an aggressive snake. I don't but, like snakes. Okay. I'm going to say that. I don't trust them. I yep. don't trust snakes. I don't trust spiders. Give me those snakes any day All over a day. silverback gorilla. Oh God. What do I do? Stand on a table for 24 hours? Yeah. So, so the <laughs> argument, the argument on the side of the, the I find a broom closet and right. close the door. Right. So <laughs> what, what was given on the argument of the side of the snakes was they're like 12 feet long. They can lunge hella far. And I'm just like, bro, I just closed the door. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it's it. over. That's they can't get me. It's game over. Yeah. Done. Easy. I just roll it down. Yeah. And then I, I sit in there for 24 hours until. Now, now there's a huge, there, I feel like there's a large component of this is like, are you just chilling in there with them? Like, yeah. are they not aggressive? Mm -hmm. Like, is the silverback not aggressive? Are we just chilling? Are we homies? No. Let's call him an aggressive right. gorilla. But if it's aggressive. You, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Then it's obvious. Right. Yeah. Done. Right. Nope. Yep, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's game over. Yeah. Because Those that gorilla will rip, will rip you in half. It will rip down walls to get to you if it really wants to. Dude. So that was an interesting question. And then I, I posed this question to the rest of the audience in here. And I think if, if you can remember this, let's take this and just throw it in the front of the video. Okay. Cause I think it's a good question to ask because it really says a lot about your sexuality. Now there's only one right answer to this, believe it or not. This is not an ambiguous answer. There's one right answer. Would you rather now this is gun to your head. You got to choose. You got it's one or the other. And don't give me don't give me stupid answers down in the comments which is like neither or uh. No, there's no there's give, no if ands or buts about this. You got there's option A, a you or got, option B. There's option A. Here's option A. You don't have to post the whole thing if you don't want to write it and well, no, no, potentially you, get your YouTube account banned. Give us the question first. Okay. The question is and this is option A, would you rather would you rather Get domed up, and if you don't know the definition of domed up, because I'm not going to get too spicy here on the tube, would you rather get domed up or fellatioed, if you will, by a biological dude who then became completely post-op, all the surgeries, looks like a chick, sounds like a chick, smells like a chick, but biologically born a dude, would you rather get domed up by this individual? And that's as far as the sexual interaction goes. No more, no less. Or would you rather get domed up, fellatioed, if you will, by a biological female, born female, that had all the operations, looks like a, looks like a, now looks like a dude, talks like a dude, walks like a dude, sounds like a dude, right? So biological, option A, biological dude became the female, looks like the chick. Option B, domed up by the biological dude, who became the female. So is it option A or is it option B? If you didn't get that, rewind it, listen to it, and really figure out which one it is because there's only one right answer to make you not gay. And with that... I thought you were going to go with the cake one. Oh, the cake. The cake's a good one, too. Oh, the cake's a good so one. Drop the two, cake. Okay, yeah. No, okay, drop the two-parter on the cake. Okay, so we're going to go with... 
that was that was question one. Would you rather one? This okay. is would you rather two? Okay, a good one. <clears throat> would you rather? <laughs> is, I, I remember this being good. I just it's can't so remember good. what it is. Would you rather sit on a cake and suck a dick, <laughs> or would you rather eat a cake and get fucked in the ass? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments below. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. Number one and number two. And with that, we, we bid, bid thee a quiff. <laughs>